I am still in the Arctic, so today's guest video comes from Colin Rodifer over at the Colin Sphere Travel Vlog, who's reporting from China. Nice to meet you. My name is Colin, and here we are in beautiful Shanghai, China. Home to tens of millions of people, Shanghai is one of the most populated cities in the world. You might know some attractions that Shanghai has to offer, such as the Bund, Nanjing Road, and even the newly opened Disneyland. But despite the enormous population, you might be surprised to find out that here lies within this city are fully built, newly constructed towns that remain virtually empty modern day ghost towns. Located at the end of Subway Line 9 lies Thames Town, an English style ghost town with street names such as Prince and Harry Street. It's what you might expect from a replica town which even sports many statues of well known figures from English history and culture. This town was originally built to serve as a thriving community and with shop signs that read open, you have to take a closer look to realize that the fresh fruits that are on display in the windows are actually fake and that these shops are in fact abandoned. On the chance that you do encounter people, it's not hard to see that this town serves more as a place of tourism and even more so, a backdrop for wedding photography. Completed in 2006, Thames Town was one of nine western style towns to be built on the outskirts of Shanghai in order to alleviate pressure and congestion within the city center. It was reported that it cost 5 billion yuan to complete and could house up to 10,000 people. Its sole purpose was to house students and staff at nine universities in nearby Songjiang University City, as you can tell. 10 years later, it just hasn't met that purpose. After walking the perimeter of the town, which only occupies one square kilometer of space and seeing nothing but empty residential after residential, I decided to test my luck and head into the city center to see what kind of lively events Thames Town has to offer on a summer's weekend night. Nothing. So why did this happen? Why did this fail? Well, once the town was completed, majority of the properties were bought up by wealthy investors and individuals looking to make businesses and this place their second home. And naturally, as demand rises, prices rise, and in this case, prices skyrocketed, making it unattainable for universities to provide accommodation for their students and staff. So with the majority of properties purchased, you end up with a lot of empty shops because you have all these businesses trying to provide service for about a thousand people when the population should really be about 10 times of that. When you think of a ghost town, you may picture the classic Western American towns we see in movies with the ever so classic tumbleweeds being blown into the distance. The difference between a town like that and this is that those towns at one point had developed communities and now we just have the remains of the buildings, whereas here, everything is new and clean and is just existing. Walking through this town, you definitely get an eerie feeling here and it kind of almost feels like the Truman Show as in you know there's people living here however something about it just feels fake. The best way to describe it I would say is it kind of feels like a Hollywood set. But behind closed doors it doesn't feel so Hollywood and you get a totally different feeling. Searching around I was able to get into a small coffee shop called Andy Coffee and with the couches turned over and the chairs thrown around you get the feeling that the previous owners just up and left the place like they had to be suddenly evacuated. In that moment I was rather paranoid about being in there but in hindsight I really should have just sat down and brewed myself a cup of coffee. The thought that I keep trying to shake is that this is an actual community where people actually live their lives rather than just being a tourist attraction and there's reasons why there have been many comparisons to the Epcot Center and I have to keep reminding myself that I can stay as long as I want and that there is no closing time. It's, uh, it's quite interesting to say the least and would I live here? Definitely, definitely, if I could afford it. If you were to ask me how English does this town actually feel, I would say that other than the Chinese characters around every corner and other telltale signs such as bamboo scaffolding, you would have a hard time differentiating between Thames Town and an actual English town. Of course you can nitpick the small things like windows being larger in comparison, but this is just a preference of Chinese culture. The middle ground lies somewhere in both the English and Chinese undying love for tea. Now whether this town is deemed as successful or not, that's not my call, and although the town didn't meet its initial purpose, the fact that the majority of the properties were purchased, coupled with the fact that China is now building another one of these towns in Beijing, tells me that they see something worthwhile in building these little western towns. Once again, my name is Colin, and thank you for experiencing this amazing place with me. Thank you, Colin. Go subscribe to his channel now. Links are in the description or on screen. He's got loads of great videos like that. And what I love about that is finding out the replica version of London has exactly the same property bubble problem as the real version of London. Next time, the final guest video, and it's about something that you've probably seen and probably didn't want to.